Houston, we have a problem. Due to a freak accident in deep space, our target market has been stranded on Mars. So what are we going to do about it today? Are we going to just let that poor customer, you know, run out of oxygen on Mars? No. We're not going to deprive them of a chance to buy the products and services that we're trying to sell. We are going to mount an ambitious rescue mission. Uh, we are going to bring him home. Guys, here's the thing. <laughs> We only have about 45 minutes in this presentation, uh, and, 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 uh, and Mark's going to run out of air. Uh, so, so, and it's not, just, it's not just our VP of sales and our VP of marketing and our CMO and our CEO that are counting on us. The entire world is counting on us to rescue this astronaut, our target market, from Mars. Guys, I know what you're thinking. How the heck are we going to do this in so little time? You know, Mars, it's kind of, it's kind of a big deal. It's like hundreds of millions of miles away from, from here. From, 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 <laughs> and, and especially the fact that most of these efforts uh, in the past, when we ever try to mount these ambitious uh, marketing programs, uh, they, always, they always fail. Um, why do they fail? Well, uh, you know, a couple reasons. Uh, for starters, uh, cost per clicks, like if, if, you're, if you're doing marketing, like pay-per-click advertising, uh, the, the cost per click keeps going up every single month by like 1% or 2%, and every 1% increase in cost per click is a 1% decrease for either you or your, your, your clients. Another challenge has to do with the fact that search advertising and just search in general peaked a couple years ago. Uh, the desktop volume search, uh, desktop search volume peaked uh, in 20, uh, 2013. Uh, people are actually spending most of the time on, uh, in, on mobile within apps rather than the mobile web. Um, furthermore, even if you are by some miracle able to get people to your website, uh, the typical conversion rate still today is, is what, what it was 10 years ago, which is stuck around 2%. Guys, here's the, the biggest problem in my opinion, uh, and that is that uh, search advertising and, and organic search marketing, well, you know, super valuable. I'm not suggesting that you don't do it. Uh, the problem is, is that the greatest strength is also the greatest weakness. And what I mean by this is that uh, search ads don't necessarily create new demand for the products and services that you're selling. Uh, meaning, be when someone searches for something, they already have to have in their head what it is they're searching for. Uh, and so, basically, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're kind of harvesting the existing market for the products and services that, that, that exist in, in the world already. Guys, when, when you think about all these challenges, uh, it does feel a little bit like a suicide mission, uh, you know, PPC marketing in 2017. Uh, I know, you, I know you have a lot of questions and you're probably like, what the heck? How the heck are we going to get to Mars? And who, who is this guy saying that we can do this uh, in, in 36 minutes? Uh, and I thought I would just take a, a quick second here to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Larry Kim. I'm going to be your flight director for this morning. I'm also with the National Space Unicorn Agency with over 100 successful flights to Mars, guys. So, so you're in good hands here. I'm originally from Winnipeg. Winnipeg is super famous in Canada. It's famous for being colder than Mars for half the year. Uh, it's, it, in fact, it's so cold when I go to Mars, I don't even need a space suit. It's, it's like nice and warm. I just need the oxygen tank. Guys, um, uh, after graduating from college, uh, I, went, I moved to Boston because the, the weather is so much nicer there. <laughs> these, are, these are jokes, guys. You can laugh. Uh, uh, th that wasn't really Boston. That was uh, Mars. I live in Harvard Square. Uh, it's, just, it's just right, right outside of um, uh, Boston in, in, in the city of Cambridge. Uh, it's a very famous place because that's where uh, fa Facebook was founded. It's where Microsoft was founded. It's also where my own company, WordStream, was founded back in 20, uh, 2008. Uh, so I started out probably like a lot of you guys, like I was just a sole proprietor, one man show, uh, you know, doing my, my uh, internet marketing consulting out of a bakery called Panera Bread uh, because it had unlimited Wi Fi, sorry, unlimited Diet Coke refills and free Wi Fi. Uh, the company has grown considerably, it's, it has over 200 employees today and manages a billion dollars of advertising spend uh, for tens of thousands of customers worldwide. That's 2% of all the money that is, 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 is run by Google. Uh, guys, I also am an electrical engineer by training, so all this rocket science stuff, I've been studying it all my life. Uh, and I also have a two-year-old kid. Uh, he's got a hashtag, PPC kid. Here we are running the, the Boston Marathon. He was trying to help me out, but actually he wasn't that helpful. Uh, <laughs> all right, enough about me. Back to the mission. 
Uh, that is, how does marketing, uh, demand generation, really work in 2017 and beyond? Because I can tell you how it doesn't work as well anymore. I mean, some people think it's like, oh, we'll just buy some keywords. Magically, people will, s will search for our stuff, and then they'll buy it, right? Well, that's how it used to work. The problem is things have gotten so competitive for the reasons that I've uh, just stated previously. And what is needed is a, is a new way of doing things, a new way to that actually creates new search volume uh, and, and provides, you know, innovative advertisers with, with ridiculously unfair advantages. Basically, we need a way to get more leads and sales at substantially less cost. I'm not talking about, you know, 10% less cost. I'm talking about like 10 times less cost, like 1,000% less cost. And so, Basically, what I have for you today is a really interesting new technology. It's called New Unicorn Rocket Technology. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, huh, R unicorn rockets? That sounds pretty expensive. And guys, don't worry. You can afford a unicorn rocket. The really neat thing about this stuff is this tech is so affordable. You can get your own unicorn rocket for $50 or less. Uh, you see, because the way that I use social media advertising is I don't spend tens of thousands of dollars on social media advertising. I spend small micro micro budgets of $50 or less uh, as a catalyst to get the ball rolling. Sometimes your marketing projects just need a little push to, to, to move things along. Uh, or I use these budgets as a catalyst, sorry, an accelerant to make a, a very successful marketing campaign all the more successful. Uh, so basically, there's two things that social media advertising does uh, that's fantastically well. The first thing that it does is it is the most cheapest, most leveraged, uh, most targeted way to get the, the marketing content that you are spending so much time and effort producing to get that in front of the correct target audience. The second thing that social media advertising does fantastically well is it provides a really cool way of turning the people who consume your marketing content uh, into actual leads and sales. Uh, so guys, uh, let's, get, let's get right to it and we'll talk about the top 10 uh, online advertising trends of 2017. Uh, my number 10 trend has to do with uh, quality score in Facebook and Twitter advertising. So what does this have to do with, with, with our hacks? Basically, uh, Facebook has this thing called relevancy score. What it's doing is when you promote a post, it looks to see, are the people who we're showing this ad to, this promoted post, are they liking it? Are they commenting on it, clicking on it, you know, resharing the post? If they are, you will be greatly rewarded with really high uh, relevancy scores, uh, which will then be rewarded dramatically with very, very low cost per click and very, very high ad impression share, meaning Facebook will actually want to show your ads rather than all the other people's ads that are competing for the same people. You're actually not the only person who want, might want to advertise to someone. Twitter, uh, it's, a, it's a much smaller venue, like maybe uh, it's kind of like Bing uh, is to Google, but, 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 but basically it's a smaller venue, but nevertheless still important. Uh, they have the same algorithm, it's quality adjusted bid. Uh, they're looking for the resonance, uh, relevance, and recency of the promoted tweet. Uh, and if, if, if there's a lot of engagement there, you'll be rewarded dramatically with lower cost per click and higher impression share. Guys, when people start doing social media advertising, uh, the first thing they do is they, they promote some people of garbage and they get like a 1% engagement rate on that piece of garbage and it's costing them like $3 a click and they say, Larry, this is crazy. I can't afford $3 a click. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Why would you do that? Like, <laughs> this is, uh, that, that's nuts. What they don't understand is that in, if, if instead of promoting some garbage piece of content for 1% for engagement rate, if they could in, instead promote something that had 7 or 21 or 30 or 60% engagement rate, you'd see that cost per click fall from $3 to as little as half a penny. Um, and, and it's not only about the bid, it's also basically for every one point increase or decrease in the engagement rate of the piece of content that you're, you're sponsoring, you can expect your, your costs to go up and down by 5%. Um, not just about the cost, obviously costs are important. It's also about whether or not your ads show in the first place. So basically, this is a typical Twitter campaign. Notice how the number of impressions for this ad unit declines every single day, even though I haven't touched the bid or the targeting or anything. Basically, what's happening is the ad platform is saying, why should I show this week old ad when I've got all these other new fresh ads that I could show instead that would be more interesting to my audience? And so basically, the, the, the idea here for success has to do with getting a very, very high quality score. If you can get a great quality score, uh, then, then life will be great. You will have tons of clicks on the cheap. And the reverse is also true. If you promote garbage, you'll get a low quality score. And those ads won't even show. And if someone actually clicks on it, it'll cost an arm and a leg. So one of, my, one of the key takeaways here is that 
instead of promoting junk, we should be promoting our top stuff, our best marketing materials. I call these your unicorns because they're such rare and remarkable creatures. The top one or two percent of the stuff that you have uh, in terms of your marketing collaterals. Uh, this is one jokey little tweet that I did the other day. It's like, goodbye, comma, Google Plus. Have a link there. Uh, you know, within a few minutes of, of, of tweeting this thing out, it had like an engagement rate of 30%. You know, one third of the people who are seeing this were like replying to it or retweeting it or clicking on the thing. And I was like, holy moly, that's like crazy. Everyone loves this thing. This is a unicorn. So what I did was I paid to promote the post for $250. Uh, within the next day, it got 1,500 retweets and 100,000 visitors to the blog. That's a huge that's a huge win because your time is not free. It costs you more than $250 to produce this marketing content. So why not spend a few dollars to make sure that the, the content that you're producing actually gets consumed. You see, the worst thing you can do, and I'm sure you're all guilty of this at some point in time, the worst thing you can do is send a donkey into outer space. And you're like, I don't send donkeys into outer space. Sure you do. Here's what people do. They say, like, I have a $1,000 ad budget for like Facebook or Twitter, and we have like 10 posts. Let's evenly di divide the, the budget. You know, $1,000 divided by 10 is $100. We'll equally divide it $100 per post. No, 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 that's crazy. That's the worst thing you can do, because nine out of those 10 posts will go nowhere. What you really should be doing is going all in on that one unicorn that will outperform all the others combined. The second worst thing that you can ever do is say something like, oh god, it's been a while since we had a, had a unicorn. Let's just promote some piece of junk from last month that went nowhere and hope that it does better this month. And that's insane. If it didn't do well last month, it's not going to do any better this month, like magically, just because you're promoting it. Garbage last month is still garbage this month. And so guys, the, the question here is, how do you all... Is there a way, a magical way, that you could always have content to promote that would have high quality score unicorn characteristics? And absolutely, if we could figure, if we could nail this equation, you would be living in unicorn land. This would be so great. It's like sunny and never rains, and it's so beautiful and, and fresh, and guys, I have created a unicorn detector. This is so easy to use. Any one of you can use this thing. Uh, basically, how it works is uh, it, it, it accounts for biases. So marketers, I love marketers, but they are biased. They think their crap doesn't stink. They think that everything that they create is a unicorn. When in fact, maybe it wasn't a unicorn. Maybe it was like a funky narwhal, or, or a triceratops, or a mosquito, or some other creature that they thought was a unicorn, but wasn't really a unicorn. And how can we account for these biases? Biases. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to run an audition. Uh, it's kind of like American Idol. We're going to we're going to do is we're going to just audition all of our content organically, like send them out through email. Like maybe the typical open rate is like 12%, and this one email got a 36% open rate. That's your unicorn, okay? That, because it's you know two or three times higher than normal engagement. And so what you do when you find these the, these unicorns, maybe you, you post organically on Twitter or stuff like this, and an average uh, uh, engagement rate might be like two or three percent. If you get a 10% engagement rate, that's a unicorn. And you only pay to promote the outliers. It's kind of like Hunger Games. Uh, where the, the, the tributes had to battle each other out in the districts, and only the victor got celebrated uh, in the capital. Same idea. Do that to your marketing uh, campaigns. Test more stuff organically. Only send your very, very best stuff into outer space. Don't send the donkeys into outer space. They never make it. They're just not meant for space travel. Guys, how do we find these uh, high engagement unicorn posts? Basically, all you do is you go into your Facebook and your Twitter analytics, download the data, sort by engagement rate, and boom, you find your top stuff, uh, and those are your unicorns. There's a huge difference, guys, between organic and paid social media advertising. Uh, in organic uh, social media, um, you know, you're just like blasting stuff out. You don't care. You're just trying to cast a, a super wide net. In paid, it's like a completely different game. Paid social media, you need to be more picky. The goal isn't, to, to, isn't a quantity game. It's a quality game. We're trying to cast a very narrow net and maximize the engagement rates within that narrow net that we're casting. This brings me to my number nine uh, hack, which has to do with using uh, you, premium unicorn kisses rocket fuel. Did you guys think that we were going to use regular unleaded? Uh, that does not provide the mileage that we need to get to Mars on the cheap. What I'm talking about has to do with ad targeting. The, 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 the goal of this exercise isn't to drive hits. That's how idiots track success. The goal is to sell. Uh, we're trying to sell products and services related to our business. Uh, here's a crazy post uh, that I wrote a year ago. Don't crucify me. I wrote this a year ago, like during the primaries. I had no idea it was going to make it this far. But, but basically, 
but basically, I wrote some crazy article on Inc. about like you know ten jokey things that you can learn from Donald Trump, uh, now President-elect Donald Trump, uh, from from his Twitter strategy, uh, and, and and this is actually the best possible thing that you could ever uh, promote uh, because because it has a target audience in mind. Like who would be interested in this? I can say like it's going to be a social media marketer uh, who leans right on the kind of the political spectrum, right? And I, and the, the other thing about this is I can exclude people like you know people who are not not social media marketers and who, who lean left. Uh, so if you're con basically what I'm saying here is blasting something to all of all the people on the internet is not a target market. Blasting to all your followers, that's not a target market. You need to be able to specify who you're going to include and exclude. Look at this $49.93 spend. I wasn't joking about the $50 thing because the reality is if, if you can't get this to work in $50, the next $50 won't make any difference. It's going to be the same. So best campaigns have a precise audience definition in mind. Uh, how do you figure out what that audience is? Uh, well, they have all these audience generation tools. You can use Facebook Audience Insights to upload your customer list, and it'll tell you what are the interests, demographics, and behaviors that, that, that they're interested in. So basically adding uh, targeting to unicorns, or sorry, targeting to, can turn these OK ads into near unicorns. Guys, my number eight t tip today has to do with a remarketing on Google Display Network and Facebook. Uh, so the interesting thing about remarketing is that people who are familiar with your brand are three times more likely to cl click on subsequent ads or, or, or listings. Of course, the higher co uh, click-through rates means lower cost per click. Uh, and not only that, they're more likely to convert. Uh, see, there's this weird thing about remarketing is that the more familiar they are with your, your, your brand, the more likely they are to convert. If you can sh if you can hit them up ten times, they're twice as likely to convert as if if, if, if they're seeing your ad for the first time. Uh, there's this other thing called super marketing. Has anyone ever heard of super marketing? That's okay. I just made it up. It's actually not a real term. But 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 basically, the idea is that you can you can combine all of these hacks together, which is to say, high engagement content plus demographic interest and behavioral targeting, um, uh, in combination with remarketing. Uh, and what you do uh, when you do this, uh, this you get super remarketing. It's not remarketing to everyone. You're going after people who who've expressed interest in your stuff. They meet your buyer uh, target buyer criteria, and they can afford to buy your stuff. And when you do do this. This is so much more effective than PPC of even just five years ago. Uh, another thing that we can do in remarketing is, is, is to add sequencing. So we can have a, a, a sequence of five videos and show video two only after video one has been consumed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Number seven hack has to do with uh, beating up on our competitors using ads. Uh, <laughs> I remember just five years ago, competitor advertising meant buying the, the trademark keywords on Google searches. And the, you know we've come a long way since then. There's so much more you can do. If they've got a, a YouTube ad uh, channel that's really well, you can target those channels or those specific videos with pre-rolls. Uh, there's this thing called custom affinity uh, audiences in the Google Display Network. This allows you to, to, to uh, target display ads based on their browsing history. That's crazy. Uh, number three, you can talk, you tar target uh, their Facebook fans um, or their Twitter fans. Uh, or you can even go after their trademarks uh, and, and, and uh, show up in their Gmail inbox based on keywords. Uh, so congratulations, guys. We've just made it out of Earth's orbit. Can we just give ourselves a little applause here? Most people, most, com most companies never make it this far. We still have a bit of a journey. Uh, ahead of us, uh, but but breaking the Earth's orbit is quite a big deal. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our gr Earth gravity assist. So now we begin our long journey to Mars, and we're going to have to bring out the big guns. One of these big guns is custom audiences. This is not necessarily a new technology; it's been around for two or three years. But I'm surprised at how low the adoption is. You think of it as like email marketing, but so much better. Like I'm the owner of WordStream, and if I want to do an email blast, my marketing guy will say, uh, "Larry, the next open." Open, uh, open uh, available uh, spot for your blast will be March of next year. I'm like, oh. you know, I'm sure you're like that. Right? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, basically, with, with social media ads, I can target those same people just by uploading the, the email and phone numbers, uh, but without the inventory constraints. And I don't even have to worry about unsubscribes or, or, or whether or not they, they they opted into my list in the first place. So this opens up a ton of interesting use cases uh, in terms of marketing. Uh, let me just give you an example of this. Uh, this is a crazy story that I wrote uh, a couple, a little while ago. It was, do Twitter ads work, comparing the performance of Twitter ads versus Facebook ads? So, so I'm a blogger. I wrote this thing. Uh, and then I made it into a little graphic. 
uh, shared it on my Facebook, shared it on my Twitter. Uh, and so this is the one interesting step that I did. I, I shared it, I promoted the post. I paid to promote the post. I didn't send it to all of my followers. That would be a waste of money. I sent it to a custom audience of 1,600 very influential people, journalists at the New York Times, Business Insider, you know, all these, uh, all these uh, tech, tech news places, the people who, who follow my um, uh, my industry. I just had an intern go in Google News and search for different keywords and find the names, the Twitter handles of all the journalists in my industry. And basically within an hour, the Business Insider editor wrote me an email saying, I saw your tw your Twitter thing. That's amazing. We love that story. Can we run it on Business Insider? I'm like, yeah, your, your site is like, you know, a thousand times bigger than my site. So of course I let him run the story. Uh, but that, you know what's so interesting about that? See those blue, those blue lines? Those are links. This is so great. I'm using my PPC spend to drive my SEO strategy. So I'm like doing my SEO link building dance. Uh, I, sh I was so excited. I shared the article, the, the copied article to my social media. But the thing about unicorns is they're so rare and so remarkable that when you do find them, you really need to go all in on them. Uh, what I mean by this is like, you should splurge. So what I did is I took another $50. I know I'm a big spender. I spent another $50 on promoting, re-promoting that post. Uh, within, <laughs> within an hour, I get this email from the producers of Fox Business and they're saying like, wow, we saw your Business Insider article. We'd love to talk to you. So the next day I'm like on Fox Business. A million, <laughs> a million people watch this show worldwide. It was a four and a half minute segment. I could not even afford to buy four and a half minutes of commercials. This is tremendous exposure for me and my business. Uh, it got better. I was beating up on Twitter ads uh, during the segment and of course the Facebook executives saw the segment and they were like, hey, we should call this guy and have him come out to, the, to, to Menlo Park and meet, meet the executives like Sheryl Sandberg, etc. So I got to meet all these teams. I got a business relationship with these companies now and, and this is so great and the best part of it was that they found out that my wife was pregnant with my two-year-old at the time and so they gave me this baby hoodie that was worth $25. That's half the cost of the media spend there. <laughs> wow, talk about ROI. So we're talking about like hundreds of, of articles placed and, and radio interviews and television interviews and business relationships. I'm a columnist on half of those places that picked up the story because they like the story so much. Total time, 10 minutes, total cost $50. If you're not into the PR stunts, you can do uh, th this using e-commerce. What you do is e-commerce people, they do lots of email blasts. All you do is you list segment. You can take those same top performing list email list segmentations like warranty expired or recent purchaser or whatever, just take those autoresponders and drip campaigns, turn them into social media ads, up and, and upload those right into Facebook and Twitter. Guys, uh, if you want to expand the targeting beyond just the people who are already in your database, there's something called similar audience technology. That means you can go after people who are 99% similar to the interests, the behaviors, and demographics of the people who, who, on your list. Uh, and my number to five hack has to do with a lunar gravity assist. Uh, so how are we going to get build up some more momentum to make the journey to Mars? We need to leverage the large gravitational forces on the internet. I'm talking about things like Dig, Hacker News, LinkedIn Pulse, Reddit. If you can get on the home page of these things, uh, you will get millions of views to your site in minutes. I, I, I tell you a, tr a true story. This is one of such uh, social media network. It's called Medium. It's kind of like a long form content publishing uh, system, kind of like Tumblr. Basically, uh, this story that I published here got over a million views and nearly 10,000 uh, hearts. Hearts are like their, their equivalent of likes. Uh, and basically, like, how the heck did this happen? It was so successful that Ariana Huffington even found the thing and, and shared, the, shared the piece of content and asked me to be a columnist. Uh, it got syndicated to like the Time Magazine and a, a half a dozen other magazines. I'm actually the number 10 author now on Medium as a result, just behind like Hillary Clinton and all these influential people. So how the heck was this possible? This, this is crazy, guys. This content is just generating half a million views per month. It wasn't because I'm such a great author. That, it was just, all I did was I used the power of custom audiences. I, I, I wrote a program that scraped their site to come up with a list of all their active users. I then uploaded those into Twitter, and I promote for $50 my content to those active users users who are very likely to heart the thing. Once you get the hearts going, you know, it's, it's basically the algorithms for all these aggregator sites are the same. It's the number of hearts per, you know, hour. Uh, and then once you start 
getting around 200 or so hearts, they start promoting you on the homepage, and you just ride this jet stream for, for, for all it's worth. And it's, it's like so easy. Guys, all of these, uh, these sites work the same. Uh, Reddit, it's all about the, the upvotes uh, and, and just getting, targeting people who are active users on the platform who are interested in the topic of the content that you're promoting. Guys, my next uh, hack has to do with photovoltaic solar panels to, to give ourselves a little bit of an energy boost. Basically, we've been talking about how it's important that you not share donkey content uh, and instead only focus d on, 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 on promoting your unicorn content, but the same thing holds true for your offers. See, most companies, see, the conversion rate is terrible. So we've got billions of dollars of ad spend, and I can tell you that this is what the conversion rate histogram looks like. The median conversion rate on, on the internet for marketers is around 2.35%. That's terrible. But there's the top 10% of advertisers are converting at around 11.45% uh, or higher. Now, you have to be honest with yourself. Am, are you a donkey or are you a unicorn? Are you converting at 2% or 10%? And if you're a donkey, stop. Stop! Stop it! Just we need this, we need to convert those donkeys into unicorn offers. And so, how are we going to do this? Uh, basically, well, I'll tell you how not to do it. It's like don't don't believe this CRO BS about like changing the button colors and the fonts and the imagery. Uh, and, and and you know we'll get a five percent increase. And if we just do this once a week, we'll get you know two hundred fifty percent increase year over year. Like yeah, right. That doesn't work that way. Uh, let me just give you an example. What you should be doing is, is actually changing the offer. Okay, so this is an e-commerce example. This company sells thousands of company of, of products, uh, you know, in their catalog, uh, and some of them have very very low click through rates, uh, and, and and correspondingly very very low conversion rates because they're not that interesting. Uh, and on the other hand, there's there's products in the catalog that have high click through rates and high conversion rates because you know the people get excited about these products, and so that excitement carries through to purchase. So what the worst thing that like, you can do, like Basically, one of these products is, is picnic pants. Picnic pants is the worst possible product in the world because it's like you're eating off of your crotch. This is horrible. Who would ever buy such a thing? That has very, very low click through rates because it's stupid. And also, it has a very, very low conversion rates. On the other hand, you've got drones. Drones are so great. This is a fantastic uh, holiday gift for your husband, ladies. Uh, basically, uh, this, this drone it has a very, very high click through rates and high conversion rates. Now, what do we do about this as marketers? The worst thing that marketers could ever do is put lipstick on a donkey. They're like, they're crazy. Sometimes they say things like, what we really need to move these picnic pants is to like get better stock photography or like make the button color bigger and buy one picnic pants, get one free. And those trust icons at the bottom, like, uh, really? <laughs> no, what we really need to do is convert this donkey uh, into a unicorn. Even if you do all that image changes and stuff like this, the best you're gonna do is summit donkey hill. What you need to do is instead is try to envision a completely different offer uh, that, that has a higher kind of a higher up, upside potential. Um, let me just give you one example of this from my own personal life. Uh, I, when I started WordStream, you know, six, seven years ago, uh, I was like offering a free trial of my product. You know, like, you know, just sign up for a free, uh, free trial. And like, why did we do that? It's just like, well, we're a software company. That's what everyone else is doing. Like, how original. Uh, you know, so, it had a 2% conversion rate. Like people weren't converting at 10%, they were converting at 2%. And three years into this thing, I was like, guys, I have an idea. What if we just flip this on its head? Instead of making people go through this, you know, two hour long trial period, what if I could just give them a report card, like in 10 seconds? You see what I'm saying? Like, so basically if I could score your AdWords account and give you kind of a grade, you're in the fourth percentile of all the AdWords accounts uh, in, in, your, in your industry and country uh, and, 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 um, and, industry, and sub industry. That, that's, that's pretty interesting. What if I could just, like, explain to you how much money is being wasted. Oh, and, and you know those, those consultants that you're paying? They haven't logged in in, in, in three months. You know, like, the, this kind of stuff, uh, it, this was the, the new offer. It's actually the same technology as before, but I just rethought the, kind of the, the, the offer. Uh, this thing converts at 40%. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's um, remarkable. I made the change in 2011, and look what it did for my product revenues. Uh, you know, we're 2,810% we're growth in 10 years. This really works. 
if you're willing to, to, to put your mind to it uh, and, and really think about like why you shouldn't just offer the same thing as everyone else. Guys, my number three advertising hack has to do with organic search. I know this is like an advertising session, but I need to talk about organic search for just a minute. Google uh, is still a big deal. They send two trillion organic searches to websites every day. And if we're gonna make it to Mars, we need to get our share of those clicks. So something really interesting is happening in the organic search ecosystem. Uh, it's becoming to look a lot more like paid search. And what I mean by this is that it used to be that Google would rank documents in their index based on the, the quantity and quality of the links pointing to your domain, as well as the keywords in that content. The new algorithms are work much more like AdWords quality score, wherein they're, they're measuring user engagement to see whether or not people are actually clicking on those organic results and whether or not they're sticking or bouncing away. Uh, and so this is the new sheriff in town. Uh, Wordstream has been able to do a lot of research on these changes over the past year. And look how I, here I'm tracking a thousand keywords, the same keywords over the course of a year, uh, May, June, and then September. Notice how the click-through rate curve is bending. Uh, the, the, the higher cl uh, click-through rate listings are floating to the top of the page. The lower click-through rate pa uh, listings are falling off to the bottom of the page. Uh, and basically, What's happening is, is Google is making click-through rate a, a really important uh, ranking factor. Uh, 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 basically, when I do the analysis, uh, for every percent increase or decrease uh, in, in terms of the whether or not you beat or are beaten by the average expected click-through rate for, for a given position, you can ex expect to increase or decrease your position by one position. Uh, so guys, uh, it's the same thing about uh, bounce rate and time on site. Uh, if, if, if what we've noticed is if your bounce rate is really, really good, uh, you're eligible for, for uh, top positions one, two, three, four. If the bounce rate falls too high, uh, then you're more likely to appear in positions five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. So. See, see that curve there? That's, I know that it's Google because it's the discontinuity in, in the graph, the kink. Uh, that's, that's algorithmic in nature. Um, guys, the, so the key to winning in organic search is to get, it's, it's almost like the key to winning in paid search, which is to get very, very high click-through rates and very high conversion rates, which is what we've been talking about. Uh, and so what do we do if, 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 if we have cra crappy conversion rates? Well. What you can do is use advertising. You can buy these organic listings, uh, top listings, basically, because people don't just randomly click on things in the search results. The, the things they click on are a reflection of the brand awareness that they have of the, of the various listings that people tend to click on and convert from the companies that they've heard of before. And then there's plenty of, 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 of studies showing that Facebook and, and Google Display Network and, and even like television advertising impacts people's brand preferences. Congratulations, guys, we're now orbiting Mars. Can we just take a minute here and, and give a round of applause here? We have one last thing to do, and that is to rescue Mark Watney from the surface of Mars. And to do this, we are going to use our Mars Ascent vehicle, also known as video ads. So earlier today, I was talking about how in, in, in social media advertising, it's so cool because you could target people based on their interests, behaviors, and demographics. Well, how do you figure that out? You can figure this out using Google Analytics People Explorer. So for example, maybe you're looking for like African American people who watch reality shows. You know, that's actually a target market for one of my customers. Uh, you know, you're looking for, for those smoking guns, like if they have this characteristic, uh, this is this is uh, this is an interesting thing uh, for me personally. For my business, it's it's like an interest in entrepreneurship uh, because people that like 70% of my audience uh, is is interested in, in entrepreneurship uh, topics, and I've got that insight out of Twitter. So what do you do with this? These insights, you you target these people using video ads because video ads, they're the cheapest and most memorable kind of form of advertising content out there. Uh, so I'm going to just show you an example. Of this, so just it's kind of crazy. It's a it's a, one of my videos, uh, but, but let's let's go. What the heck was that? Wasn't that wasn't that hard to unsee? <laughs>
<laughs> it's like a unicorn jumping into a spaceship and blasting off to Mars. So, guys, the, the, the whole point of this is that I can create this stuff that, that'll be memorable and, and, and inspirational and get, and get it in front of the target market for less than one, one, one penny per view. Uh, so, so you don't even need huge budgets. Uh, you know, if I wanted to go after like 100,000 people, that would just be a, a couple hundred dollars. Uh, and so the neat thing about these video ads is that they're just so engaging that the, it almost, almost as a rule of thumb, any, anything that you turn into a video will increase its relevancy score by two deciles. Uh, guys, my last hack for today has to do with integrating the power of the social media advertising technologies that I've been talking about with the power of Google search ads, uh, the, like just the regular Google search advertising using something called RLSA, Remarketing List for Search Ads. So has anyone heard of this one? Uh, very few. So basically, remarketing for search, RLSA, uh, it means that instead of targeting everyone who's looking for the keywords that I'm interested in, I'm only going to target the people who visited my site recently and are searching for the keywords that I'm interested in. You see that? Uh, so the interesting thing about this is that we know, as I've mentioned before, that remarketing dramatically increases click-through rates because they're familiar with your brand. That dramatically reduces the cost per click because click-through rates, higher click-through rates is lower cost per click. Uh, and it also dramatically increases conversion rates because people are, ver are very predi predisposed towards uh, converting from the companies that they've heard of before. Uh, so basically, you, what you can do is using RLSA, you can harvest the demand that you've created on the cheap. It's like you're finding the cheapest, most profitable, lowest hanging fruit uh, using, using the, the, the most efficient way possible. The only problem with RLSA is it's basically you're being a little too picky. You're only going after the, the people who are familiar with your brand. Uh, and generally in marketing, like you want to go after, it's not just a defensive game, you need to also play offense. We need to find people who haven't heard of us before. And so my suggestion here is to integrate the, these two technologies, uh, social ads and search ads with RLSA, to make that dark circle 100 to 1,000 times bigger by going after them, by targeting the, the, these, these possible target market people uh, using using video it adds to their to the demographics behaviors and interests that match your target personas uh, and so that way you can have your cake and eat it too you'll have both the quantity of conversions of sales at this remarkably low low price uh, so just a couple of ideas here um, if you're limited by budget and search ads you consider just set, setting the entire search budget to RLSA only because if you only have a hundred dollars to spend or a thousand dollars spent those first dollars should be allocated to the people People who are most likely to convert. The other idea here is what I'm talking about, uh, which is diverting some of the, the previously vanilla search ads that don't have remarketing associated with it, diverting that to cheaper audience growth uh, strategies such as search, such as social and display ads, so that you can dramatically increase your audience sizes to remarket to in search. Guys, congratulations, we've just made the sale. <laughs> What does this all mean? We just spent the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, going to Mars and back, rescuing our target audience from the surface of Mars. What is the purpose of all this, this work that we're doing, this marketing, this advertising, uh, internet, online advertising stuff? I think what it, the purpose of this is to create a bias within our target market. So basically, how it works, how marketing works, is we, we create content that is both memorable and inspirational and we get that in front of the people who are likely to buy the products and services that we're selling. Those people won't necessarily buy our stuff right that moment, but in the back of their head, they'll say, I've noted this, and a bias will start to form. Later, when the need does arise to buy the products and services that you do sell, they'll either do one of two things. They'll either do a branded search for your stuff, in which case you've won, you've won the deal, or they'll do an unbranded search for the products and services that you're selling, uh, but in which case you have a dramatically unfair advantage to being uh, clicked on and, 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 and winning that conversion. Guys, here's the thing. I've done a lot of research on brand affinity and its impact on click-through rates and conversion rates. People who, this is look, by looking at new versus repeat visitors as a proxy for brand affinity, 
Basically, the people who are familiar with you are two to three times more likely to click on your stuff and two to three times more likely to convert from, from, your, from your stuff as well. So it's like when you think of the funnel and you multiply through, this is a, an order of magnitude difference we're talking here. So these are the top 10 trends that we talked about today. Only launching unicorn rockets into space. You know, we talked about remarketing and beating up on our competitors and the gravity assists with the, the, the uh, custom audiences. We then broke through Earth's orbit and brought out kind of the, the big guns like the hacking Reddit and the video ads and changing your offer and, and, and RLSA to, com to integrate search and social and, and, and rank brain. Guys, find your unicorns. We all have them. It's your top one or two or three percent of stuff. Find them and be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys. Thank you so much. And, and thank you organizers for having such a great conference. Have a great afternoon.